And Robin was like, what y'all want me to say? Like, what y'all want me to do? What you want? Me? He's, the, the joy is taken from me. The world has taken my joy. I'm like, no, it's actually the nigga that's, it's actually the nigga that's sleep, that you're sleeping right next to. The world hasn't taken your joy. It's the nigga that's, that's, that's sleeping right next to you. You actually can handle it and be like, Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle and this is The Belle Perspective. And today I am coming at you with a brand new show that I am reviewing. This is Real Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode one, projections and deflections. If you're new to my channel, hey, if you're coming back, welcome back. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I talk about books, TV, music, movies, all kinds of things, anything you can formulate an opinion on, that's what I'm talking about on this channel. So join the community, subscribe, and don't forget to like this video before you leave, okay? Y'all, let's, let's get into this. Let's get into this. So I, this is my first time watching the show, like ever, okay? I know who the folks are. I live in the, in the, D, in the DC DMV area. I know. I've seen a couple folks, like I saw Chris Samuels out at uh, in a concert. I saw Michael at a club one night. So I see them here and there. So I know who they are, but I have no backstory. So this review is really going to be my first thoughts, like my first look. But I'm also going to be asking y'all to give me some, like help me out. Because I'm going to have some questions for y'all. So if you are some real Potomac lovers, and you know the story and the history of the show, please get down in the comments, help your girl out. This is going to be us having a conversation. So I'm going to be talking, but I'm also going to have some questions. So get down in the comments and let me know what you think because I'm... This is going to be a two-way street, girly. Because I, I, the episode opens up. It's kind of like this 80s sitcom kind of thing, giving like a recap of all the girls from the season four. Again, I haven't watched it. I know who the people are. This new person, Nika, I don't know who that one is, but we'll be introduced to her soon, sooner rather than later. And then they go into this mysterious, dark, and what's under the surface kind of play or cinematic form y'all my eyes was playing tricks on me because i thought it, you know you saw the little bubbles flying up on the screen i was like it's not it's the inverted like i really was having like i was tripping like what the heck is going on with my eyes but then i realized that this was part of the the cinema right so anyway we open up where robin dixon is talking she's on watch what happens live and andy is giving asking her to please run down what happened with scandal, the scandal. So Juan was uh, seen, receipts were dropped from a woman who lives in Canada who said that basically her and Juan had an affair. Juan told Robin that the girl didn't have any money for a hotel. So he went down to the hotel and paid for her hotel. He was communicating with the girl on IG. She was at a casino. I'm assuming probably at the MGM. She ran out of money, needed to get a hotel. I guess she lost her debit card and she reached out to Juan. So we're all kind of like, girl, okay, okay, girl. Okay. All right, Robin. So that's what I'm I'm looking at Robin like, okay, girl. All right. Okay. All right. So we we open up the actual show because they had to give us all the backstory. We open up the actual show and Robin is at her home. She is looking at photos from their wedding ceremony. Juan and Robin got remarried from what I understand and what I know. And she I think I heard somewhere that there was she wanted to put some sort of clause in their prenuptial prenuptial agreement in case of any type of infidelity. I don't know. Y'all get down in the comments. Let me know if that if that clause was put in place. Because if it wasn't, then this would make so much more sense as to why she's holding, if y'all hang on, okay, <laughs> with the jaws of life, okay? If she didn't put that clause in the, in the prenup, this makes more sense, okay? So, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell y'all that she got booed 
at BravoCon. Girlie got booed. So she was talking. To, let's get into it. So Wong comes in. He comes and sits down. They have this real awkward, just, I mean, staged, trying to recap what happened with the whole scandal. And you can tell that he really doesn't want to talk about it because he's told her this lie. And it feels like she's asking him to reassure her and it feels like she's asking him to regurgitate what he told her, but he don't really want to do that because he probably forgot all the details and, and not because he just forgot, but, but he made it all up and he doesn't remember the lie. So it just feels like just uh, like, like you digging in rocks or something, just very like, uh, come on, can we get on with it? All right. Very what says that he feels like he is too nice? I said, Robin, I'm not going to, you know what? I wanted to ride her like a, a camel. I wanted to ride her like a donkey, but I, I don't, I feel like there's some mental health issues going on here. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to hold off until, until we get further into the season. So he says he is too nice. That was a flag for me. That's a red flag for me. I've heard that before. And that's never, that's a, that, no. <laughs> he says he's giving money out to people, you know, done this, done that. But the optics of you giving money to somebody that may have be maybe unsheltered, that's total, two totally different things. And I know that you look at Robin like she boo-boo the fool, but the rest of us, the rest of us that are watching, sir, we are not, I am not boo-boo the fool, okay? So then he goes, tells a little bit of the story. He says the woman reached out to him through IG because she was coming to visit a, a player for the Baltimore Ravens. Now that's where another red flag, just waving, just flying, just flying high, okay? Sir, if she was coming to visit visit somebody from the Baltimore Ravens, why in the hell she didn't reach out to that player so that she can get money? Two things. She's either a industry girl, okay, an IG, an IG baddie who's been, her information may have been passed around by some of these affluent men i don't know if i don't know if juan is affluent the but ravens. why are you reaching out to juan anyway i digress okay it's been 10 minutes and i'm running my mouth about just that and i said to myself that this video wasn't gonna be too long but child here we are okay right. so again just very cringy apparently this happened before they got married say robin you had a way out I, at i at first was like okay maybe this happened after she got married and she was just trying to salvage whatever p you know this is the second time around i just have to make it work but sweetie this was before you even married this man she decides to take it to her podcast and this is where the, this is the problem, right? She decides to take it to her podcast with Giselle, Reasonably Shady. The problem is, is that she ran Candace's marriage through the ground, right? She assisted with running Candace's marriage through the ground, implying that Chris was being inappropriate with women, with the girls on the cast, flirting, calling people, sliding in the DMs, you know, just doing these things that Juan was actually doing. Um, but trying to accuse Candace's husband, right? And so the problem is you have this, you sitting on this scandal, but you all in our business and you're pushing malicious lies that could potentially ruin a marriage that may not necessarily have been true. And so that's the problem. The, the problem is the fact that Robin knew all of this was going on. She assumed that Karen knew everything was going on. And she assumed that Karen was going to air her dirty laundry so that she didn't have to do it herself. And that's the problem. It's like, bring the mess to us about your life don't wait for someone else to bring it to you while while simultaneously trying to point the finger and be in other women's business okay that that's the problem and so when she was trying to explain herself in bravo con i don't know if y'all saw the uh the twitter 
the the video. I've been trying to keep up with everything going on at BravoCon, specifically for RHOP, RHOA, you know, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, Baby Season 2 is coming, and it's on the way, and I cannot wait. So just trying to keep up with all of that. Baby, the girls was not having it. Baby, they were booing Robin, because she was like, you know, I just, you know, we had worked through it. Why would I bring something old to this new season? Girl, that is not old. It was like six months before. We absolutely need to be talking about it. And there were multiple situations. Dear, we absolutely need to be talking about it. And I understand, baby, the way that they booed that girl on that stage, I would have ran away in shame. Uh, I would have cried in the car. <laughs> I would have got up and left. Like, oh my, devastation to the nation, the way they booed that lady. It was too, it was funny. It was absolutely funny. It's not right, but it was funny. Anyway, so, okay, so there was that one situation with him paying for a hotel, paying for a hotel, and he left. Then he was seen at a laundromat with Coach Bree. Now, at first I thought Coach Bree was a dude. I was like, well, who the hell? Who cares if Coach Bree's cares? Find out Coach Breeze is a, a girl, a very beautiful woman. What the hell are you doing at a laundromat? Now, somebody on Twitter said that he was doing laundry for the team. Now, Coppin State, I believe, is an HBCU. Let me let me just double check. Coppin yeah. State is an HBCU. Okay. So I understand that HBCUs may not have the funding like a D1 school would or does. But I'm pretty sure they have staff that can do laundry for the players. And I believe that Juan was either the head coach or the assistant head coach. Why would the head coach or assistant head coach be doing laundry for his players? We we're not asking the right questions. We're not we're not doing that. Then this same woman was seen with him at a nail salon. There is something very intimate about taking your man to the nail salon with you, right? You're either one having him pay for the nails, which is what I think was happening, okay? Or two, you guys are on a date, he's getting a pedicure, you're getting your nails done, he's probably getting a pedicure for the very first time because you convinced him, or this is something that you all do now as a, as a couple, because this is something part of like your couple self-care. Juan, there is no reason why you need to be at a nail salon. Again, the only reason why you would be at a nail salon if you was a dude is if you were doing it, because this is your girlfriend. And y'all doing it together, self-care, or you tricking and you paying for your and you or you paying for somebody nails. Like I let's focus on that. <laughs> we've all been there, right? We we've all been young gals, right? We've all been some young gals, and you know, and we've had a time or two we done had somebody take us to the nail salon. Okay, we know what it is. We know what it is. Dear, there I, I don't and and the and the fact that I don't understand how Robin is not processing it, and then we come to find out that Robin didn't even look at the she didn't even look at the conversation between Juan and the girl on IG. She didn't even look to see how the conversation even started. She just went off of what he said and standing ten toes down in what he said. With, with, like, no proof for herself. And he tries to, this is another thing, I'm too nice. And then he was like, so Robin says, well, did you? Because, again, she's not certain of the, she's not sh sure of the truth, right? And she, and that's what it felt like in this whole conversation. She didn't feel like she, un she didn't trust what he was saying. So she wanted him to reassure her, and he wasn't doing that. So then... She says, well, I mean, you had an opportunity, you know, you were at a hotel, you could have just, you know, fool la la with the girl. He was like, well, have you seen her? Have you seen her? Sir, stop. Uh, please, 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 please. One, y'all don't be giving a damn what, what these girls be looking like sometimes, okay? Y'all really don't be giving a damn. One, 
who, sir, I have never, the way that men are set up in our society, they either, one, are only going to respect you if you're related to them, two, only going to respect you, and this is not all men, so please don't get in my comments with all that foolishness, but if they find you attractive, like that is a lot of men, like they're not going to look out for you unless you're related to them or unless they think that you're attractive. So please with that, Juan, are you kidding? Stop. Like I, I Robin, the facts, it's, I, girly, girly, I, I'm concerned that there's some mental health issues. Y'all get down in the comments. I mean, was there mental health issues before that we didn't know about or that y'all that wasn't talked about? Because the way that she literally has given up, it's very scary, y'all. It is very scary. And I, I would encourage anybody to go check on her frequently, okay? So we get to Karen, Candace, and Wendy. They're meeting at Baby Shank, which is a restaurant off of U Street. Um, that's in Adams Morgan, um, or near Adams Morgan, Morgan. And they're recapping the reunion and all of the things that was said. And uh, who is Karen is basically, you know, saying, going down the list of all the girls that she's been able to kind of reconcile with because there were a lot of mean things that were said at the reunion and she Karen says she's okay with Ashley she's okay with Giselle but Robin not so much because she felt like Robin went on a whole tour to you know deflect from the truth that was ha actually happening under her own roof and they all agreed we find out that Wendy gave up alcohol for Lent because she's Catholic but she is Lent is over and she's still kind of like not too much on alcohol anyway Somebody said, is this marriage a, an arrangement? Honestly, is, is it, I mean, it's expensive up here. It really is expensive to live up here. So is it because she, they roommates? Are they going half on the rent? Is that what this is? Like, I, I just don't, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know. <laughs> Please let me know what y'all think. All right. So Ashley, Ashley is living in a $2.2 .2 million home. She didn't say exactly where it was. Michael does not live with her. They are not fully divorced, but he is still on the deed. She needs him to continue to pay for the things that um, her, you know, room and board, et cetera, et cetera, because she don't have nothing else going on. Um, she is slow to divorce Michael because he got the money. And I told y'all I saw Michael at the club. He really do, who said this, but he really do look like, um, what is not? It's not Gandalf. What is it, y'all? Whoever from Lord of the Rings, put down in the comments. The big eyed, my precious. He looked like him in in real life for real, y'all. Ew. She calls Giselle on the phone. G Giselle is being nosy, trying to figure out what the hell she got going on. Saw her on IG. I guess somebody DM'd her a picture of Ashley on vacation with Michael. That was super weird and was on vacation with Michael. Giselle wanted to know who paid for it, who's paying for it. Are you getting paid? What's, you know, what's going on with your coin girl? And Ashley did confirm, you know, we went as co-parents, not as, you know, as getting back together or anything like that. And, you know, he's still giving child support. He's paying for the mortgage. His name is on the deed, et cetera. So, and I'm taking my time with getting a divorce because Michael's the one that got the coin and I have no... I have no claim to his fortune, which you did all of that. <laughs> you had two kids from this man. You have nothing to show for it. Okay. All right. So we get to Giselle and Jason who, all right, y'all, this is why I have questions. I've got questions. So is this Giselle's first boyfriend on the show, y'all? And the reason why I'm asking that is because... Giselle was doing a lot with this boy, this man. He's 16 years old, younger than her, right? He got these braids in his hair. And I, he would have been all right to me had he not had them braids in his hair. I'm like, please get them. Please do something with them braids. Like that, I just can't take you seriously, right? Apparently he's a good cook. I'm here for that. But it was just giving, like, this my man, y'all. Look at him. Look at him. He my man, y'all. You see him? I got a man, y'all. And we really like each other. Can you tell we really like each other? This my man, y'all. Like, like, what? Girl, who? 
okay, move on. What else is going on? What else is going on? She met him through Ashley's ex. And I feel, was, was he on Southern Charm? Is that that, pic, that picture that they showed us? Was he Southern Charm? Because he gives me a mirror from uh, Summer House Martha's Vineyard, a guy who never dates black women. He gives a guy that don't date black women, he gives a man that this is the first time he's dated a woman that's like black, right? Um, although I'm, that may not be the truth, but that's kind of what he gives. So just like, is this her first, this, is this her first man? I don't know. Y'all get down in the comments. Tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong. And I know y'all going to get me together if I'm not right. So Grace is her daughter. I think Grace is her oldest. Oh, it's shaking. Uh, Grace is her oldest daughter. She's going off to college. Grace is absolutely gorgeous. They decided to go to Dubai to celebrate her spring break, which is amazing. Um, Dubai is amazing. I love, love Dubai. We can't wait to go back. It's, it's, it's a time. So much to do there. And, and yeah, I literally wrote, did she not have a man before? Is this the first man? Um, and did they, it did Ashley just decide, okay, girl, you need to find you somebody this for this season because you don't have nothing going on. So let's find you somebody who can, who's been on TV before. So it, he's okay with being in front of cameras, especially on Bravo, right? Like that's what it felt like. Like this was arranged. I don't know. Get down in the comments. Tell me what y'all think. Cause it was just giving real cringy. I'm like, girl, what is going on? <laughs> okay, girl. Yay. You got a man. Okay. Yay. You want me to get you some flowers? You want me to, <laughs> what you want me to do? Mama? Celebrate, get your trophy. What do you, what do you want? All right. So we get to Mia and Gordon. They're living in North Bethesda. It's real nice over there. Y'all. Um, well in Bethesda, let me hush. But that's, that's nice. All right. So they went from a 10,000 square feet home to a 1,500 square feet home. Damn. Y'all couldn't at least get 3,000? Damn. 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 Okay. Anyway, they moved out of the big house. Uh, they couldn't They couldn't afford the $10,000 uh, a month rent. Walks in, takes off her shoes, and he tells her, don't lock the door. What? Lock that motherfucking door. I don't know what the hell y'all got going on over there. Lock that damn door. They tell us about the joint chiropractic. I've seen the joint even in Florida. I saw the joint in Florida. So the joint is like a chiropractic um, studio. It's all over the place over here. And I, I've even seen it in like shopping centers in Orlando as well. So Giselle on the reunion was saying that the situation with Gordon, who was a CEO and it was a family run business, is that... It looked like it was embezzlement. So I don't know. Y'all get down in the comments and tell me what was going on in terms of the brother and Gordon. But basically, he was ousted of being CEO. Mia is no longer the marketing director. And I don't know what they're doing for a living right at this point. And Gordon went through a depression dealing with losing his job. And he was saying, you know, you were kind of blaming it on me. You thought that I was doing something wrong. We had forensics accountants come in and take a look at the books and everything was clear. But, you know, the business still owes me at least a half a million dollars. But you were kind of looking at me like I must have done something wrong. Mia clearly has married Gordon for money because if y'all saw some of my shorts, Gordon had already made an arrangement with her like, okay, I can provide for you as long as you can play your part and clearly she couldn't stick to the role anyway she tells us that she's decided to cut out hard liquor because her mouth gets her in too much trouble but she's still drinking wine which has the same amount of alcohol in it but hey Mia cool this is my first time I'm seeing all the girls and I'm just like cool 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 the only person who I'm low-key side-eyeing is Robin because like girl is this a mental health issue like what's really happening girl I was feeling really bad for sis. I really was feeling so bad for her. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, so Candace and Chris, I love the head headband she had on. Candace are going to a park to have a, Candace and Chris are going to a park to have a picnic. I love me a good picnic, y'all. Got the exact same basket and everything. It's so cute. Oh my God, yes. Anyway, um, that's my inner white girl. So she, they're, you know, recapping the tour she went on a uh city winery tour and she spent at least six figures and did not get a return her objective next time is to obviously make a return and ticket sales and merch 
and she's going to get ready to go on tour again. Are y'all listening to her music? I feel like I heard one song and it was cute. I haven't listened to anything else, but we get into it. Y'all get recommend any uh, musics or songs or singles or anything in the comments so that I can listen because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad. Candace brings up the situation with Robin and how Robin basically put up these smoking mirrors like, hey, 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 focus on Candace and Chris because I don't want y'all to be paying attention to what's going on with my marriage because my man is cheating on me doing the very same thing that I'm accusing Chris and Candace, right? My man is doing the very thing. And Chris was looking at her like, child. like he didn't say it, but he gave a black woman child. Did you see his face? He was like, child. he gave it. It's like, okay, you've been around Candace long enough. See you. I see you. He doesn't think that their relationship is completely demolished, but there's definitely some work that needs to be done. So then we get to the intervention. And this is where I was like, does Robin need... What does Robin need, y'all? What does Robin need? Okay. I let me get to my notes. And and please feel free to get in the comments because I don't I, I'm really starting, I'm trying to be sensitive about this because I'm I'm starting to feel like this is a true mental health issue. Intervention. It's Sharice. It's Ash. I don't really know who Sharice is. I guess she was on the show before. Sharice, Sharice, Ashley, Giselle, and Robin. So I love that dress that Ashley had on in the confessional. It was that metallic blue, purple. I love that. It was so pretty. I love metallic colors, metallics and neons and stuff like that. Those are my colors or the colors that I gravitate to specifically. So Ashley invites Giselle over and all these women over because they really want to have an intervention with Robin and Sharice and and Ashley and all of them actually have dealt with infidelity and, you know, all of the craziness that it goes with, the hurt, the heartbreak, the betrayal, those kinds of things. They feel like, what the hell is going on, Robin? Is she in denial? Is she in delusion? Like, what's going on? So they trying to come down these this sidewalk. Baby, that sidewalk looked dangerous as hell. Why did y'all just put y'all flats on? I could put my flats on. And then when I got down to the bottom of it, I would have put my real shoes on. Actually, who am I kidding? I would have just kept my damn flats on, child. I wouldn't even, please, okay? To break my neck over the, being trying to be cute? Man, you got me, fuck, no. It's a no for me, dog. Okay, so Robin gets there. Her heels are like this high. I, I didn't know if Robin was going to make it. I really didn't. I did not. I was like, who, Robin, if you bust your ass on this concrete, girl, I'm going to holler, okay? So she sits down. She's like, oh, I'm the person of the hour, okay? And she sits down and they're like, listen, we want to be here for you. We want to see what you are going through. Like, you know, they're trying to, right? And Robin was like, what y'all want me to say? Like, what y'all want me to do? What you want me to the, the joy is taken from me. The world has taken my joy. I'm like, no, it's actually the nigga that's, <laughs> it's actually the nigga that's le- that you're sleeping right next to. The world hasn't taken your joy, but it's the nigga that's, that's, that's sleeping right next to you. You actually could handle it and be like, not, you could be like, okay. Or on the road to getting back to being okay. In this scene, she literally has given up. She's defensive of him. She keeps asking me, what y'all want me to say? What do y'all want me to do? Y'all want to be mad at him? Y'all want me to be mad? Y'all want me to go off on him? Y'all want me to kick him out? I'm like, right. How does it not get a rise out of you? If he's been faithful to you this whole time and you've built some sort of trust with him, how is it that you're not moved now, right? Not even so much as to put him out or I don't know. And she keeps saying they worked past it. They worked through it. But what exactly did you work through? When she said her joy was stolen, I just said, oh God, you know, this is, this is, this is serious. Like, this is, I don't know if Robin is in therapy, but I recommend that she at least see someone for herself. I'm not going to say anything else about this. I'm going to end the video, the the review here, because I don't, I feel like there's some mental health issues going on. There's some mental health issues going on. Yeah.
Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about the episode. There's a lot that I do not know. So feel free to get in the comments and tell me. Yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ooh, cha. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, these books will have me working overtime. Okay. But I'm cool with that. All right, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episode.